r slash ask reddit by ready reddit what secret could ruin your life serious a friend of mine i used to hang out with alert chase told me a bad secret during our sophomore year of high school we were good friends and smoked alert together but we came from a bad neighborhood anyways one day at school i watch his back when he sells a gram of weed to this guy terence bully senior real asshole kinda chunky but played football the year before and was built as we are walking away chase just keeps going on and on about how much of a prick that guy was after school we both put our money together from ourselves to buy another rounds as we are smoking he tells me he needs to tell me something he says that terence guy tried raping his sister at a park but stopped after she started screaming who at the time was in eighth grade Chase tells me how Terence wanted to buy some weed after school, but didn't have enough for a gram. This was after his sister told him what happened. So he said he'd give it to him for free, if he stole a few cans of 4 Locus. Which was really easy back in the day. After, Chase said he acted like he was really happy about it, and smoked him out for free, and then gave him a blunt to take home. He told me that when he rolled it earlier he laced it with heroin for Terence and has been lacing all the weed he sold him with heroin he gets from his uncle who knew what he was doing and basically turned Terence to a junkie. Told me he's been doing it every day for weeks and been charging him double since Terence doesn't know anyone else to buy off of. That he's even been to his house and got to take some of his shoes, TV, sparks, iPod, basically everything a teen would want in exchange for more and also to pay off debts. We weren't some boy fast kids or anything but our families were heavily gang affiliated and most people knew that. He then tells me he didn't sell him any weed earlier that day but gave him a bit of H I asked him for free. He said, nah, I had the idiot steal me some jerseys from Foot Locker, and I sold them for like $200 at the flea market and started laughing. I did my fair share of ducked up poo throughout high school, but I felt really weird about that. I didn't say anything, because I was a gang member at the time, so I didn't feel like I had a right to judge. I never told anyone. We grew apart after that. I moved away from my hometown a year later. But I hear that Terence has been in and out of rehab slash jail and struggling alert. Pretty much homeless when he's out. Chase's sister is going to prom in a week. I was sexually assaulted by my parents' neighbors. A father and son. The son was in his teens I was 8. They used to put me in this walk-in closet and have showtime. I never realized what was happening until several years after we had moved from my grandmother's house in Phoenix to Houston. Fast forward 20 years goes by, and I have a daughter of my own. She's four and we decided to visit grandma in good ol' Valley of the Sun. We get there, and a few days pass, and one day my daughter's outside with her older cousins playing. I step outside to check on her, and I'm grated with that same ducking. Neighbor's son holding my daughter giving her raspberries, while his dad is playing with the other's cousins. Something clicked. More like a twitch in my mind something tipped me just a nudge. But it started something. I walked outside grabbed my daughter and corralled the kids and made my presence known. That tipping point sent me into a emotional spiral of brooding thoughts. In white collar, I make my money off of thinking. I'd never say this to real life human, nor will I ever give the details of how I did it. But several months after our visit with grandma, my wife thought I had another work training. When in fact I came back to Phoenix, I burned their home to the ground. Everything was lost except for the master bedroom and walk-in closet. P.S. A well-placed anonymous tip does amazing things to duck up someone's life. They both survived unfortunately. I swear to god I've hoped I've done enough good in my life to earn at least one wish. That would be to meet those low-life maggot creepers in hell and be their eternal tormentor. I look at my daughter every day and know she gave me the strength I needed as an adult I didn't have as a child. This won't ruin me, because I've already went no contact with my mom, but it still hurts, and is a big secret I've not told anyone. When I was a kid, I had asthma pretty bad. So, I'd be up all night, coughing constantly. My mom and I lived with her parents. We shared a room, so I slept in her bed often, when I was a toddler. Mom would come home from work, and lay down for bed, but I'd keep her awake with my coughing. Sometimes at night I'd be coughing and she would hug me so tight that I couldn't breathe. 
It would really distress me that I couldn't breathe. But I knew mom loved me so much. And I didn't want to tell her she was literally squeezing me to death. Because I was afraid of hurting her feelings. So I'd just tell her that I loved her so much. And she would cry pretty hard after that. Took me years after having my own kid and treating him gently to figure out that it's actually pretty difficult to squeeze a kid so hard that they couldn't breathe. Mom is bipolar and has had other incidents of hurting people and abandoning those in her care that need medication and can't take care of themselves. So, I finally put it together and figured out mom would be so agitated with my asthma that she would try to stop me from coughing by squeezing me almost to death. And then she would cry out of guilt when I told her I loved her. My dad probably sexually abused me when I was a kid. I say probably because I don't actually remember it, but all the signs were there. I used to not want to clean slash touch my genital area and once I had blood in my panties, my period started many years later, just to name a few. Apparently he drugged me to make me sleep and then do whatever he did. The case went to court, but they decided there wasn't enough proof, so he wasn't charged. My mom was granted full custody though. I don't really feel like it was my fault, but I definitely feel disgusting. I mean, it's about the most disgusting thing a person could do. I don't really know what the point of writing this was, but it feels a bit liberating to be able to say it. I hope anybody who's gone through similar things isn't doing too badly. When I was about 5 years old, my sister, 2 years old, and I were in the backyard in a kiddie pool. When my mom went inside, I attempted to drown my sister. After I saw her lifeless, I realized that it was a big mistake, pulled her out of the pool, and called for my mom. Luckily she knew CPR, and she was life flighted to the hospital. My mom thanked me for saving her, pulling her out of the pool. Next week was my birthday, the police, firefighters, paramedics came to my house to give me gifts and celebrate my birthday. To this day 20 years later, I still think about it. I remember the day so vividly, not a soul knows the real truth. Little kids often don't fully understand the consequences of life and death situations. You made a really bad childish decision, but recognized the gravity of what you'd done and immediately took action. I'd commend 5 year old you. A normal reaction for a little kid who just did something bad is to run and hide. You didn't do that, and your sister is alive today. Since nobody knows who I'm on this account I will say it here. There is an autistic kid at school, he keeps telling me he is going to shoot up the school, constantly asks if I want it, I always get scared and say no, he says he will not shoot me and shoot girls so I can have them. He says he wants to join ISIS and become a terrorist. The thing is, is that he is either making really dark jokes or he is just very mentally handicapped. I would feel like garbage if I told on him because I don't want the autistic kid to get in trouble. He might not know what he is talking about, but at the same time, if he does something I don't think I would be able to live with myself. Edit, I'm going to tell my dean I promise, I appreciate you all telling me what I should do. Update I'm at school right now, when the day ends, in going to go talk to the dean and the principal. Update the 2nd of May 2nd 1.58pm. I went to the dean's office after school today, and she was not there. I assume she went to the school's main office for something. So I just left an anonymous letter. I have no idea where the principal was, and had to get on my bus home so I left. The dean probably will see the note. Update the 3rd of May 3rd I didn't see the kid in school today. I assume he got suspended or is in jail. I honestly don't know. I hope he is getting help. Update 4 I don't think he is at school anymore. I haven't seen him and nobody hasn't talked about him. I assume he is expelled or suspended. Not entirely sure. I feel incredibly bad about telling on him though. I had a baby with sperm donated from a man who advertised on Craigslist. If my very religious family found out it wasn't an accident I would be completely shunned and disowned. I'm a female who is ugly. No, that's not the secret. But, I am ugly because I have a facial deformity that I was born with. I've never had a long term partner and only had sex a few times in my life. My biological clock was ticking loudly and I desperately wanted a child. There wasn't going to be time enough to meet someone and my odds were non-existent as a middle-aged ugly female. I own my home, have a career, 
but I didn't want to lose all my savings to pay to have it done through a clinic and sperm donation, etc. It would have been at least $15,000 per try. My chances of adopting were also almost non-existent as any women looking to adopt her baby out isn't going to pick the ugly, middle-aged lady to adopt their baby, plus is crazy freaking expensive. I wanted the money I had in savings, etc, to toward raising the child. So I turned to Craigslist and got it for free. My child is a preschooler now, and I've never been happier or more fulfilled. I pinch myself every day because my child is in my life and I feel so ducking lucky. Every day is a dream come true, and I savor each and every moment. I try to be the best mom I can be in every way. Parenting really makes you take a long, hard look at yourself and how you show up in the world. I parent from my heart. I regularly send pictures and updates to the generous and selfless man who trusted me on a handshake. Thank you for watching Ready Reddit. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more r slash videos. Share your stories in the comment section below.